Well, let me wish you a Merry Christmas on behalf of our staff team, our elders, our church. We are so glad that you are with us. To those of you who are joining us online, Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, today we are kind of wrapping up what was our, been our Christmas series called Christmas Cookies, looking at the four ingredients of Christmas, the four kind of days of Advent, love, hope, joy, and peace. And so today we're talking about this idea of peace. Now, I don't know what comes to your mind when you think of the concept of peace, but for me, for whatever reason, my mind always goes to war. So, you know, it's like, hey, what comes to mind with peace? A bunch of battles and soldiers, you know, kind of clashing with one another. Why? Because at the end of the day, what they are trying to achieve, whether you agree with the former function of it or not, is that somebody is trying to find peace away from a different country or nation. And if you think about this idea of peace, it is something for throughout the majority of human history that had to be declared by a king. It's not till the recent couple centuries in which we have this idea of democracy and presidents and, and, and elected officials. For the majority of history, you had kingdoms and empires ruled by kings and empires. And in order for peace to exist, those rulers had to announce it. And that's what I want to talk briefly with us all here this evening is peace. And peace having to be something declared by the person in charge. And specifically for us as humans, the Prince of Peace being King Jesus. Now I want to start off with some fun though, talking about this idea of king. When the word king comes to mind, there's a lot of different kings out there. So I'm going to show you some pictures. Uh, I encourage you to kind of uh, play along with us this evening. As these slides come up, I'll give you either some hints uh, what these represent. So here's the first one. The king of rock and roll is known as Elvis, right? Not to be confused with the king of pop who is... Michael Jackson, good. Okay, some of you, uh, anyone who's like under the age of 30 is like, who is this? Is this Pierce Brosnan? What's going on here? I don't know who this guy is. Uh, when you think of maybe perhaps food, if you're, you're hungry, there is the, the uh, king of the burger world known as, and this of course is their infamous Whopper, hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, special order, don't upset us, anybody? Like three of us, cool, okay, we could be friends. If you're a reader, if you're into thrillers, novels, horror, this is, of course, Stephen King. Awesome. Uh, if you are someone who enjoys late night kind of talk shows or interviews, the king of them all, Larry King himself. For all of my boomers out there, uh, this would be proud for you. Uh, she was a famous tennis player in the late 60s, early 70s. Anybody? Billie Jean, yeah, that was like a, a, a very loud roar. So thank you. Wow, that was great. Uh, and last one, uh, if we go over to blues music, change up a little bit. B.B. King himself. All of these people are kings for various reasons. Now, some of them, they just happen to have king in their name, so they didn't really do a whole lot. Others of them, they accomplished something great. But the thing is, is none of them reign supreme. Some of them, you could make cases that other people were greater at their craft. You could make the argument for sure that, that Burger King does not make the best fast food burger. But when it comes to King Jesus, the one truest, arguably most fundamental thing about him is he is holy, he is great, he is good, and nothing comes close to his majesty. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 7 and then in verse 9 talks about the coming of King Jesus, the, the incarnation, the birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary that we celebrate every Christmas season. In Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, Isaiah says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and we will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah will later say in chapter 9, verse 6, which, which uh, Olivia just read for us, it says, for, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the governments will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This idea, Prince of Peace. If somebody was the prince back in the ancient Middle East, it means they had the right to the throne, the heir to the throne. They were on their way to becoming the king. And it's interesting how God defines his son as the Prince of Peace. He does not call him the prince of this world. He does not call him the king of joy, but he specifically says he will bring you a declaration of peace. Think about how we all seek peace in life. 
We have countries in our world today that are still at war seeking peace from one another. You may have a relationship with, with an in-law or, or somebody close to you in which it is not good. There's tension, there's strife, and there's maybe some bitterness or some ungiven forgiveness and peace isn't quite what it is. Perhaps the last couple days, uh, your, your house has been anything but peaceful. I talked to three people today alone in which either their water heater or their furnace went out. If you're talking about a time of not being at peace and being comfortable in your home, that would do it today. And oftentimes, as we look for peace, we can't find it. We try to buy it. We try to purchase it. Some of us, your only desire over the next 48 hours, if somebody says, hey, if I could give you one thing for Christmas, what might it be? And you say, I just want to slump down in a chair, and I just want a little bit of peace and quiet for some time. But every time we pursue peace in this life, unfortunately, it doesn't last. It doesn't fade. Another relationship comes along that gets strained. The kids only make it 10 minutes out of their promise, 60, until the next show has to be put on. Peace is hard to find, and it's hard to sustain. You see, if we were to define peace, I think we like to think of it as a lack of disturbance. That that peace to me in my life, and maybe peace to you in your life, is I just want everything to go right. I want everything to go according to plan. I don't want any problems, certainly no issues. But when the Bible talks about peace, it talks about something radically different. You see, the word word peace is a creation word. It's the word shalom. Uh, When 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 it says that, that God spoke ex nihilo, out of nothing, this world into existence, the word is shalom, and it's a word that means peace. It also means harmony and unity. Togetherness, everything working the way it's supposed to be. But that harmony was broken. That peace with God was broken through the first sin. And what was introduced is a brokenness that you and I live with today. It's a brokenness called sin. A brokenness that has existed and will continue to exist, but leads us to the reason we are here this evening. To celebrate the Prince of Peace who comes to bring us peace with God. Think of how beautiful it is if you were to go to Israel today or if you're somebody with Jewish descent, you greet one another with that word shalom. It doesn't just mean hello. It doesn't just mean hi, how you doing? It's a declaration of peace unto the person you are speaking. That's because peace is something that must be declared. In the same way, a king must declare peace for his country. In another way, a relationship must seek forgiveness in order for peace to exist. Peace is something that has to be declared. Question is, why does peace need to be proclaimed? It's because something was broken. Recently, uh, my son Jude had a Christmas program, and he had this little, uh, uh, this like, this headband with reindeer antlers on it. And our, our daughter, Avery, she's uh, three years old, uh, like two days ago, walks up, and Jude, is this yours? And he says, yeah, and she just psh, snaps it in half. And then what does she proceed to do? She just drops it on the floor. We say, Avery, you can't be doing that. You can't be breaking things. And she goes, it's okay, daddy will fix it. And leaves it on the floor and walks away. That's her understanding is that when something is broken, somebody else is going to come along and fix it. Enter your boy, you know. And that's the thing about peace is you and I all know deep down there is something broken in our world. We can read the latest headlines. We can just look on our own past and see to ourselves something isn't right. Something needs to be fixed. Something isn't the way it ought to be. Who's going to do that job? Who's going to come in and repair the damage and hopefully put it back to the way it was supposed to be? We are all broken people, whether we like it or not. We are all searching, whether you realize it or not. And we need someone not just to tell us, hey, something's off. We need someone to pronounce peace and where to find it in our lives. So the question isn't then just why do we need peace, but who can pronounce it? See, the only ones who can pronounce peace are the ones who can deliver on that promise. Whenever we seek to find peace in certain things, I don't know, for me at least, it seems to kind of evade me over time. And maybe you feel this way too. Maybe there's something off. Maybe there's something not right. Maybe you're searching after peace and you think to yourself, well, a little bit more square footage ought to do it. 
a new, a new whip, maybe with some new wheels, man, that would really feel nice. Some new clothes so I can get a new drip going on and look good for all the people out in the world. Man, it's going to feel good. But with all of those things brings new worries, new payments, and things that will ultimately break and need to be fixed as well. Some of us, you know, well, what about a new person? What about a new job, perhaps a promotion? Well, a new person might bring some new energy, but you're going to soon find out that they have problems just like the old one. That new job might be nice to have some more money in the bank account, but it's going to come with more responsibility or stress along with it. And what all these things do for us is something similar. It's they offer us a facade that for a moment or for a season it works, but then eventually it will break and we'll be left searching yet again. And that's what Jesus came to do. He said, let me offer you a peace that does not break. Let me offer you a peace that restores shalom. Let me offer you a peace that unites you eternally with my Father in heaven. When Jesus was talking to his disciples in Matthew, or sorry, John chapter 16, verse 33, he's talking about how, how Jesus has the ability to turn grief into joy, but he says this at the end of chapter 16. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And Jesus is not talking about a little bit of peace. He's not talking about a sliver of peace. He's talking about a holistic, everlasting peace, an eternal peace, a peace that we need proclaimed over us, a peace that solves that original brokenness of being restored because one person and one person alone can proclaim it over us, and that is King Jesus. You see, Jesus is able to offer us peace because he went on to offer himself his perfect life, death on a cross, resurrection three days later, so that whoever believes by grace through faith may receive that gift of peace. And life with Jesus does not mean life is always easy or perfect and rainbows and butterflies, but it means you have peace no matter what life throws at you. So it leaves us with two choices. You can tirelessly chase peace of your own doing or you can receive peace that comes with trusting in the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. King Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. I hope that peace has been declared over you in your life. If you're with us this evening and you've never received that news, if you've never heard that news, if you've ever accepted that news, just know it is a free gift. It is a gift of grace and it is a gift of mercy. Grace means we receive what we cannot earn. Mercy means we do not receive what we do earn. And Jesus, being the Prince of Peace, says, I will give you both an everlasting peace that surpasses all understanding. And because he is king, he has declared that over everyone who shall believe in him. Because he is King Jesus, and we worship him this evening, not just this Christmas season. We're going to enter into a time of communion tonight. And we encourage you to take these next few moments as the team leads us in this song to take out those elements. If you didn't get them on your way in, you can visit. There's uh, stations, two in the front, two in the back at the entrances to the auditorium. And as they sing this song, we invite you to think about this idea of the peace Jesus brings into your life. Think about the peace he has brought into your spiritual life. Think about the peace he has brought into your family. Think about the peace he wants to bring into your finances, into your workplace, into your homes, into your neighborhoods. But ultimately, that the peace that is brought eternally because he is the King of Kings and we worship him.